final uh, demonstration has to do now with uh, a polymer, a, a solid polymer sample, no solvent involved. This one is a network polymer. That is, we've taken, uh, the manufacturer's taken natural rubber, added sulfur to it, heated it up as Goodyear discovered, and cross-linked the polymer chains together. Okay, so to make a reversibly elastic polymer network, you need polymer, number one. Number two, they need to be cross-linked to prevent uh, permanent irreversible flow. And the polymers, without the cross-links, need, need to be essentially liquid because they need to change their conformation when we stretch the rubber band. Some chains are getting stretched between the cross-links, some are getting compressed. And what I want to do here is to stretch a rubber band and if you can't, you can certainly tell that I've made it longer and probably you can also see that the uh, width has been decreased at the same time. It takes very good eyes to tell whether the thickness ha has decreased, but actually it does. And, and, and careful measurements have shown that when you stretch a rubber band, the volume of the stretched rubber band has not changed appreciably, only the shape from the at rest rubber band. So if the uh, distance between the molecules haven't changed before and after stretching, probably this is not an energetic process. We haven't changed the energy because the molecules are not closer together or farther apart and therefore their interactions haven't been altered. So that means when you have a, 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 a zero energy change between two states of a system, it means that the heat and the work have to cancel each other. All right, so if I do work on the rubber band by stretching it, this normally would increase its energy, but because the energy of a rubber band doesn't change when you stretch or, or, or let it relax, the energy you pump in in the form of work by stretching it has to be released in the form of heat. So to find out if that's true or not, one can just take a, a fairly thick rubber band like I have here, put it between the sensitive portions uh, of your inner lips here that are wet, Give it a stretch and you should be able to sense a warming of your lips because the heat is coming out of the rubber band as I stretch it. I'm pumping energy in and the energy comes out in the form of heat to our lips. So uh, another uh, uh, demo that we're going to do for uh, rubber elasticity has to do with temperature. Okay, so typically if we take a rubber band that's, that's stretched, that means it has a weight on it and we heat it, it does not get bigger or longer, it actually contracts. Why? Because we're putting energy in in the form of heat, we've got to take it out in the form of work. And the only work it can do is pick up the weight. So the rubber band actually shortens with, with, uh, uh, with the heat. And so we're going to demonstrate that now. Mr. Shen has built a little apparatus here. Yeah, I think that was clear. And so, <clears throat> uh, again, uh, the, the key feature here is the fact that these polymer chains change their conformations. In the case of the elastic network, we're stretching some, we're compressing some when we pull on a rubber band. And what happens is that we, we reduce the number of conformations available to those polymer chains. Uh, and that means we lower their conformational entropy and they don't like it, so the force of retraction is a, uh, is a force generated by trying to get back to their equilibrium larger number of conformations. And so this elastic uh, uh, response of a rubber band is largely conformationally entropic. So I hope today's uh, demonstrations have convinced you. Uh, I'm going to walk around the board here. Don't get too excited <clears throat> to get to my polymer. Uh, that it's important that when one wants to understand the behavior of polymers uh, to realize that they're long, flexible chains that really have a mind of their own. Depending on the chemistry of their chains, they adopt different conformations and they give you different responses and different properties. So this is where we need to start when we try to uh, develop structure property relations for materials made out of polymers. And I hope this has uh, been a good introduction to you. Thank you very much for your attention.